Hey, 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 Cheekers. Welcome to The Lavelda Show Women of Power Podcast, the show where women share their personal power tools, the techniques, strategies, and ways of being which have enabled their business and life success. I'm your host, Lavelda Vincenzi, a female speaker mentor, speaker, and event host on a mission to unleash authentic, powerful female voices onto the world. In today's episode, we'll be uncovering the power tools of Jenny Garrett. Jenny is an award-winning career coach and leadership trainer with over 13 years of experience of running a global business. Jenny empowers people to make the transformation that they are seeking actually happen. That could be navigating their career, successfully finding work that is more on their purpose, or getting the best out of their team. Everything she does is aimed at either advancing gender balance, creating inclusive workplaces, or equipping young people with the skills that leaders of the future need. In this episode, we will really be diving into that mysterious path that following your calling and passion can take you down. Now, remember that all links shared in this show can be found within the show notes. The only way to ensure that you get your regular fix of this show is to hit that subscribe button right now to make sure that you get updates as soon as a new show is added. Well, 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 that is quite enough from me for now. So let's dive straight in and get on with the show. Hey, 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 Chicas, welcome back to the Lavelda Show Women of Power podcast. Oh my gosh, has season one been packed, action packed. If you are not already subscribed to the show, you need to hit that subscribe button. If you are like X number of episodes in, you have been listening to every single episode and you have not yet left me a five-star review, I mean... Can you get onto that, please? I'd really appreciate it. I've been reading all of the reviews. I'm really loving this. Um, So my guest today, we're going to continue with the theme of the show, which is very much digging into the depths of what makes a woman powerful. And today's guest kind of pulls together a whole bunch of stuff that's like important to me and the things that she's doing in the world, I think are really cool. So she works in the space of gender diversity. She works with people in really um, assisting them and being all that they can be in developing, going out into the world and doing those things that they've always desired, but maybe they're not quite making it happen. And she even does this with youth. Like, I mean, nobody's out of bounds for Jenny. Please welcome my guest today, Jenny Garrett. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Loving your energy and really excited to be here today. Thank you so much, Lavelda. Girl, I got to find the energy somewhere. It's (laughs) hot today. I mean, like hot, hot UK hot. Like we're having tropics weather in the UK and it's just (laughs) wrong. Uh, I mean, it's good if I could be out laying in the sunshine, but unfortunately that's not yet the case. I'm going to see if I can squeeze it in later on today at some point. (laughs) So I'm getting, I'm getting, um, what do we want to say? I'm getting energy from from the sun that I yeah. can't see at the moment because right. I'm a sun baby. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jenny, you do a lot of work. I mean, you work across multiple different sectors, some would say, and it could be easily kind of confused because I know there's a lot of women out there who've got lots of things that they're interested in, but they're not quite sure how to bring it all together in a way that doesn't confuse the market. But you've managed to do that really beautifully. How did you come to pull everything together under a single niche? Yeah, I think because it all does really make sense to me and it's all about my values. It's all about what's important to me and how do I put that into action in the world? That's what it all starts from in the call. So for me, gender diversity, inclusion and the next generation, they are at the heart of all the work I do. I really Mm -hmm. uh, want women to be empowered. I really want a world where everyone can thrive and reach their goals. Um, And I really want to support young people to do that as well as uh, some of us oldies. So um, yeah, everything that I've devised makes that happen. And so it does all flow. It's all about empowering people and helping them to be their best selves. And we've got to start that young. If we start young, we don't have to fix people when they're older. <laughs> I love that it makes sense to you because I yeah. think that's, that's the core of where it starts yeah. from. Yeah. Um, because when I'm working with speakers who've, they've got all of these interests, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I could do this and I could do this. And there's all of these things that they could speak about and they've got passion and interest about. And, but the thing about going to market with anything is you've 
if you if people are confused mm-hmm. i say it's like the everything shop or or that takeaway we all know the takeaway that does mm-hmm. pizza kebabs chinese <laughs> indian you don't go there when you want like a good curry you'll mm-hmm. go to the you'll go to the curry house for a good curry mm-hmm. you kind of walk into it and you kind of go what's the thing they sell the most of fish and chips okay it's a fish and chip shop that's tagged on all these extra things yeah. just just to have them, but really it's a fish and chip shops or really it's a chicken and chip shop or really it's a pizzeria and they just added all these extra things. Um, but I love what you say there that you have figured out it makes sense to you. Cause I think when you hit that point, it's easy to explain it to other people yeah. in a way that makes total sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and it's all, yeah, as I said, it's all about my values, my why, what difference do I want to make in the world? And then I just do it in many ways, but at the heart of it, it's all the same stuff. So you know, um, when I'm speaking on TV, it's all about empowering people and making a difference in the workplace. When I'm standing in front of a group of people providing a leadership development program, it's about helping them navigate the workplace and feel empowered to do so. And when we're running a teens event, it's about, yeah, let's, you be empowered, recognize your power as young people and navigate your way through life. So it's just helping people to do the things that they really want to do. However, one thing I would say is with the teen events, I'm never at the front of the room. I'm never the speaker because uh, young people don't want to hear someone like me. They want to hear someone that they can really identify with, who speaks their language, who looks not too many years ahead of them. So uh, I organize those events, but I'm never the person at the front. That's interesting that you've, you work, like I say you work that out, but if I remember when I was a teen, like there's a gap there's a little gap that's a few years ahead of you you're happy and then otherwise you're like oh these people it doesn't matter who they are or what they've done it's just you take one look and you think disconnected they don't understand my world Uh, pretty much if they look like they could be your parent they don't understand your world because your definition is my parents don't understand my world so anybody who looks like they could be my parent certainly can't understand my world yeah so it's interesting the approach that you took with that crowd to still go there but not force yourself into the space that's it it doesn't always i think that's it that's a lesson for life just because you want to make a difference in the world doesn't always mean that you have to be the face of it It doesn't mean that you have to be the person at front doing all of the work either uh you can get a movement you can get a group of people together and make that whatever it is happen so yeah you can make a difference without always having to be all on your shoulders yeah how did you get into doing this? Like to get yeah. to the point of what was that driver that had you go, I want everybody to feel empowered? Because it sounds like it's like really right at the core of who you are and what you're about. Yeah. What sparks that? Yeah, it's a really interesting journey. And I think the work chose me as opposed to me choosing it. I, uh, I used to have a senior roles in marketing. So and marketing was my passion. I absolutely loved it. And then a colleague who's now a really good friend, she came into my office one day and just said, where next? Where are you going with your career? And I remember thinking, well, I'm here. I'm doing it. You know, I've got a good job. Uh, what's, what's wrong with what I'm doing? She was, you can do more. You can train people in marketing. You can get a bigger job with a bigger budget elsewhere. She was saying all that kind of stuff. And I remember at the time thinking, I don't want a bigger job with a bigger budget elsewhere. My daughter was very little. I didn't really want a long commute. I didn't see myself talking in front of groups of people. I just uh, was absolutely a really completely nervous public speaker. And then she said, what about coaching? She said, what about um, you? Actually, people come into your office on a daily basis. They come away with actions. They come away motivated. She said, actually, you do coach people. And I thought, well, If the organization is going to support me to go on a coaching program, why not? Not sure if this is true. Not sure if I really am going to love this thing. Went on this coaching program and I found it completely personally and professionally transformational. Just really made me think about myself, my own motivations, who I was, why I was doing what I was doing. And I just found the power of one-to-one conversations to actually just unlock people's potential. Um, I found for myself, I just looked at the world differently and uh, realized that there was so much more that I could personally do. And I just thought, I want other people to have this feeling um, that, you know, I'm not the only one. There's lots of people in this world who could benefit from, you know, a conversation that just unlocks 
who you really are, all of your potential and helps you realize your dreams. Um, and so I completed this coaching program, went back into my organization and said, I just want to be a coach now. I don't want to be a marketer. And they said, well, that you've been employed as a marketer. That's your job, Jenny. Uh, get on with it. Um, they let me do a little bit of coaching, which was great. Um, and then I felt quite stuck. I felt quite boxed in. It was just, mm -hmm. you know, actually, I don't want to do this work anymore, but this is the only work I know how to do. I don't really want to be self-employed. Didn't, you know, the idea of it was a bit scary to me. And so I got some coaching myself and my coach helped me kind of hatch this plan to go down to four days a week um, employed. And then on that one day I had free to see if I could build a business, to see if I could get some clients, to see if I actually really liked coaching or if it was just something that was sort of a fantasy in my mind. And we also set a target uh, financially. Um, and within a year I'd achieved it. So I took that leap to start running my own business. And that's 13 years now. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> a long time. Go, yeah. go Jenny. Go Jenny. Go Jenny. <laughs> just makes you feel old. <laughs> Look, if you're watching on YouTube, Jenny does not look a day over 31. So don't oh, even God. start. Yeah. Don't on. even start. <laughs> don't <laughs> even. People will be looking like, is that your sister or something? Uh -huh. No, she's not my sister. We ain't related. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. I appreciate the compliments. <laughs> It's interesting because um, quite a few of the guests that I've spoken to in this season have not, uh, have had that kind of journey of saying yes to something that's then led on to something else. Mm. And I think sometimes we can be, um, I know I had points when I was starting out where I'm looking at what else is going on out there in the world. I'm looking at other people. And from my perspective, it looks like they've got all their shit together. I'm like, oh my gosh, like they know what they're doing. They've got it together. But to hear that, to be speaking to so many women who were like, girl, I had no clue. <laughs> I had no clue. I yeah. wasn't about to pick this. I just, you know, one thing kind of led to another. I said yes to one thing. But if you'd have told me, like if somebody had come to you 15 years ago and said, Jenny, you know, you're not going to be here. You know, you're going to be on telly. You're going to be doing TEDx's. You're going to be working with all of these. Um, you're going to be working with uh, senior executives. You're also going to be working with youth. You're going to be having such a big transformation in the world. You probably would have looked at them cockeyed, like really. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't have believed it at all. No way. Yeah. And that wasn't my ambition either. So I would have been just, why would I do that? <laughs> but yeah, you're right. And I think it is about being open to opportunities. It's so key to, to, you have to be careful, obviously, because you're only one person and you can't be open to everything and you can't say yes to everything. But keeping an eye out and thinking, yeah, is there a reason why I should say yes to this? What could it deliver for me? And so many times it has been not knowing, you know, not being sure where something's taking you, but just going with it. And um, when I wrote my book, it was very much like that. I just had this idea about female breadwinners, did the research, wrote a book, had no idea how it was going to take off. Hadn't, you know, a lot of people have a real plan and write a book. It's going to turn into a program. It's going to make me millions, all of that stuff really didn't have that plan just thought it, again it was something that I really cared about I wanted to put it out into the world and as a result it really resonated with people and ended up taking me on down so many different routes that I wouldn't have expected haven't read the book but have listened to the TEDx and it was very oh, good thank you very good that. thank you very um, much because I think the the truth is there are with um the traditional kind of couple dynamic where you've got the male breadwinner and the female i don't know supporter she's normally at home or maybe she's working but the the male counterpart in that relationship um is often the one making more money well we've got many different relationship types as normal now for a start so please don't message me with with different types of relationships. I'm just, I'm just a talk about one. We're open to all of them. I'm not excluding nobody. Okay. Um, but in that kind of, in a male female relationship that traditionally that's kind of been the dynamic where the, the man has been the breadwinner and it can be really disconcerting both for a woman and a man when you're in a relationship where that might be flipped on its head because it's like, well, can I continue to grow my business and progress because now that gap's going to get bigger and they're getting triggered and the guy's just feeling like, well, what the frick is the point of me being here if you've got this all together? And, and it's a difficult conversation to have without it kind of triggering at 
the essence of what somebody thinks they should be doing. Like I'm here to provide and I can't even do that. So how do you have that conversation in a way that doesn't have somebody feeling, you know, terrible? So I love that you brought that to stage. You should listen to a TEDx, by the way. It's on, they're all on YouTube, but like find Jenny Garrett TEDx. If this is a thing that's been something that's been playing out for you, it's really good. Have your partner watch it too. Opened up my partner's eyes. He was like, oh, okay. Mm, okay. You know, good. It's a good, it's a good listen. Uh, so this idea of following even when you don't know where something's going to, because I'm sure we'll have listeners who maybe they've got an idea for a book or an idea for a podcast or an idea for something. And it's been like niggling at the back of their mind for a while, but their heart is kind of being pull pulled to it, but they're going, oh, I don't know if frick that sits in with anything. So when I figure out how it sits in, then I'll do it. But you were kind of like, well, it's calling me. So I'm just going to write it and see where it takes me. Yes, yeah. I think there's something just listening to you, what you're saying, for me, it's about trusting yourself in, in all of these choices that you make. Um, there's something about how you trust yourself. So um, you, you might make a mistake, but you kind of trust yourself to pull, lift yourself back up again and do whatever you, whatever you need to do. Trust yourself to not go too far in something that doesn't work for you. And I think sometimes we don't trust ourselves enough to even try. Um, but if you, if you trust yourself and think, you know what, I'm a person who's resilient. I'm a person who always finds my way through. I'm a person who knows lots of people who can support me, you know, actually remember all of the resources you have, you're more likely to try these things instead of in a way, not trusting yourself, you know, not trusting your instincts, not trusting that you can, you know, recover or that you can thrive. And when you don't, you, you really do hold yourself back, make yourself really small and you don't get opportunities, yeah, you're safe, but, but also, yeah, you don't flourish in the way that you should do. I have had such a journey in the last, oh gosh, probably at least in the last 12 months about around this word of trust. And, mm -hmm. and I think there's so many layers to it. So mm -hmm. my personal experience has been looking at trusting myself, trusting others, and trusting the universe or whatever you want to call it. Like just mm -hmm. trusting that whatever decision I make is exactly the decision that needs to be made right now for my better good. Like just trusting that everything is conspiring for my ultimate success mm -hmm. rather than, than that things. Are, so even if it doesn't turn out exactly as my mental mind would like for it to turn out, yeah. that that is exactly the experience I need for where I'm going to next. Because it's like we have this tendency to go good experience. I just want them. Yes. But often the thing, when we think, when I talk to people about why they talk about the topics that they talk about or why they get into what they get, they've gotten into, often there's, there's something that's happened that hasn't been great that's meant that they're able to do what they're able to do. Absolutely. You know, it's not normally that it's been smooth sailing the whole ride. Something's yeah. happened, some mm -hmm. sort of experience, something has connected people to it. Something, it's not been smooth, but those negative negative experiences i'm doing the little like yeah. joey hands yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm in the air like those negative experiences or things that we want to define as unwanted experiences are often the things that are exactly what qualify us mm. to be able to do what we do like i can't talk to people about developing a huge amount of confidence on stage because i really was never an unconfident person right, a okay. friend of mine however was like girl i had like 30 years of like being terrified of speaking well if you want to talk about how to go from being terrified to speaking i speak on stages now she can kind of resonate and connect with people on that topic in a way i can't because i have mm -hmm. never yeah. had that experience myself. I get yeah. nervous, but I've never been that person where there was a stage and I couldn't say yes to it. Right. I'd say yes. And then I'd freak out closer to the time. Like, what did I do? <laughs> like, you know, but that to me is just like normal nerves, mm -hmm. but I've never got on a stage and not been able to find my words. Mm. I've always been okay with it's a group of people. I go through some mental thoughts and I'm able to speak. So when somebody's that terrified, I'm not the best person to work with because it's not my forte. Mm. Um, but this idea of being able to trust that whichever direction it goes in is absolutely perfect. Yeah. And that way you have no regrets either. You have no regrets. It's just like, this was what was meant to be. This is how it is. Um, and I, yeah, I, I think it, it's so key for all of us. Um, uh, I think that, yeah, we worry about either failing or making the wrong move. And I think it can be paralyzing. 
So it's mm. this idea, you know, actually it's better to keep moving. Just keep moving. Even if you're going in the wrong direction, you're moving somewhere and it's going to tell you something. But being paralyzed and stuck doesn't, it doesn't deliver anything for you. And I think the movement is important. Movement's important. Let the universe be your GPS. The, the universal GPS will bring you right back on track where you need to be. So Jenny, uh -huh. oh, we're back. We had a little moment there. Yeah, we, we did. Had a little, stuck, we had it? a little moment. We'll see how this goes. Oh, yeah. Um, so, it says my you know, internet connection is unstable. I think we're going to be fine. Back okay. on board. Trust okay. and believe, darling. Trust and believe universe yeah. has got back. <laughs> You know, when it's like, all right, ladies, practice what you preach. I'm like, yes. okay, then I got this. We're here. I'm, it's exactly as it needs to be. Um, in your opinion, having worked with so many people, especially in this space of empowering people to reach their full potential, what is it that you think makes a woman powerful? What is the essence of a woman's power? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. What's the essence of a woman's power? I think... Um, I think it's when you step into yourself and are proud to be you, um, uh, unapologetically you. And I don't mean that means being rude to people or disrespectful in any way, but it's like, this is me. And actually not everyone will love me and that's okay. But I know some people will get it. Um, and, and I think when you can step into that space, which is actually, I'm willing to take my own route. And it might not be the route that other people would recommend, but actually I think this is gonna work for me and I can be me in that space. I think that's when, when, you, when you show your true power and it is powerful because people's criticism doesn't really hurt you and neither does people's praise really make you have a big head either because mm -hmm. you're very grounded in yourself. And I think that's something we all have to work to be. I think it gives us, it gives us strength, it gives us power when we're just like, yeah, this is me. Uh, you know, that's, there's that song, isn't there, from The Greatest Showman? This is me. Love that song. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's it. that. Yeah, it's that. This is me and this is who I am. I'm proud to be this person. Um, I'm not perfect. Uh, but actually, uh, this, is, this is where I stand in my power. I think that's what, what makes women powerful. And it doesn't matter like, whether you're a homemaker or whether you're at the top of an organization, you can have that power. It's like truly being 100% happy in your skin. That, I, there's something that you said there I need to pick up on because people don't skin, skim over it, but it was deep. You know, when people drop a deep bomb and you just skim over it because they said it quick. What you said in there was like people's criticism doesn't hurt you but you're also not governed by their praise yeah and I think often the idea of not wanting to be affected by criticism we're very conscious of like mm. I don't want you know why somebody said something and the effect of criticism what we're often not so conscious of is the effect of praise because in mm. either side effectively what you're saying is something outside of me is going to yeah. define how I feel about me yeah. if people have great things to say about me then I'm happy and if they have bad things to say about me then I'm sad mm. but to be in a space whether they're saying great things or they're saying bad things or they're not saying anything at all mm. that you're you're happy. Yes. I just really wanted to pull that out, mm -hmm. that, that it's both sides. It's not just batting away the criticism. It's also mm -hmm. being able to, um, to, to hear the praise, but mm -hmm. not have to not be governed by the praise. Right. Absolutely. Cause you just seek more and more of it and that can take you in the wrong direction as well. Um, it's yeah. like whatever that wherever wherever my cheerleaders are, that's what I'm going. Yeah. But yeah. do you know what? It's so interesting you say that because often mm -hmm. <laughs> I say often the number of times that that I have come unstuck where perhaps I've been too attached to a feeling of something that somebody's saying. You know, mm -hmm. when you end up with those like phony friends, that's yeah. what I'm going to call them. The, yeah. uh, the good Friend. weather friends, <laughs> the good weather friends, yeah. they be there like cheerleading and they are in your corner when shit is good. Yeah. And then shit's not good. And you turn around and those bastards have gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. what? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. that's the other side of the coin because yeah. it's all really good when it's good. Mm -hmm. And they're there in those sort of, good moments, those happy moments. And then as soon as it goes, you know, something's not quite right, they can't find the phone to pick the phone up because they're just in that kind of happy space all the time. So being in a space where neither one affects you, what I found, at least in my friendships, mm. um, that 
I'm much more grounded in those friendships because I can have far more open conversations where I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you both sides of the coin. If I like it, I'm going to tell you I like it. And if I don't, I'm going to be just as honest about that and say, girl, mm, that don't look good. <laughs> it just doesn't suit. Yeah. yeah. So you'll get both of them. But um, I think when you're, when you're chasing those people who've just got the positive things to say about you, the things that make you feel good, there's a, there's a trap in there too. So thank you so much for, for shining a spotlight on that side of things because mm-hmm. It's a good reminder to me as well, because sometimes I, I just want people to say nice things, especially yeah. on social media. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want you to send me a, you know, a one star review. I'm not interested in that. I just want the five star ones. <laughs> well, we all want the five star reviews when they're public like that. Anyway, we do want it. I understand that. <laughs> but yeah, the one star, is it about you or is it about them? That's always you have to think about. And that's both ways as well. Praise and, that, you know, what is this about? So, yeah, be grounded in yourself and, and none of it matters too much. So we're going to make this all about you now, Jenny. Okay. <laughs> so we understand what makes um, your perspective in terms of groundedness for what makes a woman powerful. But I want to understand what makes Jenny powerful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to get to the core of Jenny's power. So here's the main question I ask all of my guests. Okay. If you were to take everything that you've done in life and business and boil it down to just three things that you would say, these are the core things that have been pivotal to my success. And they can be tools, strategies, techniques, ways of being, um, define it as you would, but just three things that you say, these are core to my success. What would your three things be? Let's start with your first one. Um, definitely consistency. Consistency is so important to get up and do the same thing day out, even when no one's, no one's giving you any response, you know, putting things on social media, even when you're not getting any likes or, or views, uh, just being consistent, consistently showing up because people are watching, even if you don't think they are, um, you know, consistently sharing uh, the, the message about who you are and what you do being consistent in living your values as well. So if I say this is important to me, am I actually living in that way? Am I actually doing the things that I say I will, doing the things that I preach for other people to be Mm -hmm. doing? So for me, there's a consistency which is so important. And it's really easy to try something for a month and then just like, oh, I can't bother anymore. I haven't, I haven't won. I haven't got what I wanted out of it. I, I, I failed with that. I'll move on. The amount of times for me that I've been consistent with something and it's been a whole year, you know, before I start reaping the rewards, it's been a whole year before suddenly I realized that someone was watching and things start happening. And that consistency is just so important. You know, for me, sometimes I've gone for business and I haven't won it. You know, there've been bids, there've been different things and I've just consistently plugged away. And then you find a year later that people come back to you. We chose someone else, they weren't that good. Now we're coming to you. Thank goodness you're still here and you're still sharing the same message. Yeah, actually we made a mistake before and now we're gonna go with you. And that, you know, that's happened to me time and time again. But what if I had said, oh, I didn't win that. I'm not going to do that kind of work anymore. I'm going to try and do something else because obviously I'm doing it wrong. It's not necessarily about that. So this consistency is so important. It doesn't have to be boring because in a way it sounds like, yeah, I get up at six o'clock every morning. I have my cereal, I do this and, you know, and then I make five calls or all of that stuff. It's not that kind of consistency. It's the consistency of actually, this is what I'm about. And I'm consistently putting that out into the world. And as you know, through what I do, it might be putting it out through children. It might be putting it out through supporting women. It might be through my talks. It might be some of my retreats. I'm doing it in lots of different ways. So it's never boring, but there's a consistency in terms of how I go out into the world and what my message is. And that's really important because people are watching that and people are observing. I don't mean you never change because as I I started off providing leadership development, and then really niched around women, 
and then sort of broadened out again. So I'm not saying it's always exactly the same thing, but there's a, a consistent, if you cut me in half, there's like, it'd be written in the middle of me, like a stick of rock. Don't cut me in half, Lavelda, please. But I'm not, I'm not <laughs> gonna cut you in half, I promise I won't do it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I did an article years ago where I kind of compared business to, um, to the gym and exercise. Mm. And it, it, it is that, right? Like if you want to be fit and remain fit, you don't have to do a huge amount, but you kind of need to go consistently. And yeah. that might mean, it doesn't mean you have to go two times a day for five days a week. It doesn't even mean you need to go to the gym five days a week. Yeah. It doesn't mean it necessarily it's a gym, but you need to have some sort of physical activity consistently within your week. Because if you go weeks and weeks and weeks without doing it, you know what, after a while that's weeks turns into months and that help that fitness starts to deteriorate. Mm. You maintain it by continuing to do something something you find and you might switch it up it might be at home exercises for a while then you get bored of that and then you get into running for a little bit but the underlying element is this idea of consistency and you're not the first person to say this because I interviewed Michelle Raymond and she goes if she does not do if she's going to start something new she's going 100% at it for a year before she before she lets it go Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. then she can say it's this that didn't work it's not me that didn't work it right yeah absolutely and I think often where there's a lack of consistency, we're so busy looking for um, that moment of, oh, okay, so I was, I was on Instagram and I did all the Instagram stuff for a month and nothing happened. Mm-hmm. We're looking for those overnight moments where you can yes. go like, boom, you know, because they're exciting, right? It's exciting are. to see. They are, but they're not real because all of those overnight successes, you know, gave a year. <laughs> Or, or, or longer to get that overnight success that everyone thinks. You know, when I wrote my book, I remember everyone saying, oh, wow, you came from nowhere. And I was thinking, no, I've been doing this work for a really long time. You know, that's what people suddenly are aware of it. But it was always there and you'd always been doing the work and it, it's never an overnight success is the truth of the matter, really. I, it's very rare that somebody, that all of these things come together in a way. I mean, I, one of my guests was a lady called Katia Vabanova and she turned her business around and like, th- like literally built it from scratch in about three months. Right. But it was, she says to people, she goes, please don't take me as an example. Like it was a very specific moment in time. I had a lot of luck on my side, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. a lot of luck. Mm-hmm. Um, she just happened to have stumbled across the sector just as it was breaking out and you know other things were happening that just meant it kind of came together and she had a huge amount of focus on it and she met the right you know it just but it's not normal (laughs) it's just it's an anomaly it is an anomaly for most of us it's it, what you're seeing is if you even look at actors, right? The ones you're like, oh my God, they just showed up. It's like, no, they've been doing this in the background for 10 years. Yeah. They've had three really crap movies with really rubbish reviews. Mm. This one, it came together because all of that learning has kind of come together perfectly. The perfect storm was created and now the momentum's built. So mm-hmm. you, girl, thank you for the reminder. For those of you who was just about to drop another new shiny penny, pick that penny up, pick it up. <laughs> Dust it off. Pray with the penny. I don't know. Sit with it for a bit longer. Give it a year. Give yourself a full 12 months before you let it go. So your first, uh, your first power tool is consistency. What would yeah. be your second one? Um, the second one is focus. Um, and I guess they're similar, but not the same. The idea of actually really being focused and, and getting on with something because people in business um, quite often we are attracted to all of the different things that are happening around us. There's always something new and something different. Someone's always teaching you something. There's always more training to do. There's always more learning. There's always another event. You know, there's always another way of doing things. And there's so much going on that actually to focus on something and get it actually done. You know, I'm sure you meet Lavelda, so many people who, you know, you're getting, you're getting it done. You're getting your video series podcast done. There's some people who've been saying for the last 20 years, probably, oh, not 20, maybe because podcasts probably haven't been so big for 20 years, but but five at least, I would love to do a podcast. Oh, I don't know how to do a podcast, but I'd love to do that. I'd love to interview some people, but they're not doing it. And there's so many people who are talking and thinking, but not focused enough to actually start something and finish it. You know, when this COVID-19 thing happened, I thought, what do people need right now? What do I need 
Yeah, what do I actually need? Uh, I need some resilience. I need to be able to bounce back through this and be resourceful in this. And together with some other people, we created a video series. And it's really funny, the other people who, I, who are on it were like, wow, you just got that done. How did you get it done? It's like, yeah, when I focus on something, I focus on it until it's done. And I just, and I just do. And my husband says it's really weird. He, you know, he always says that to me, it's so weird. Why are you so focused? So if we're in the house together, um, not when we were, now we have to be in the house where, you know, everyone's quarantined and all of that. But when, we, when we're in the house together, he'd say, my gosh, you know, why aren't you distracted by the TV? You know, why aren't you going out for a walk? Why aren't you doing this? And I'm just like, no, I'm getting on with my work. I'm focused. And, and I, I think it's a, a skill I have. I don't necessarily think I have to, well, I do have to work on it some days uh, more than others, but most of the time it's like, this is what I need to do and I need to get on with it. Um, and don't let all of those distractions happen. Find ways to get around it. I, I have found it difficult to be as focused as usual during this pandemic. And mm -hmm. what I've done is um, I started going back to use the Pomodoro technique don't know if you've come across that. What Ooh, it is? No, do tell more. It's a timer. We, it, um, you can get an, an, a Pomodoro app and it times you for 20 minutes and it counts 20 minutes. So you've got to focus for 20 minutes and then it gives you a five minute break and then another 20 minutes, five minute break and then another 20 minutes and then it makes you break for an hour. And so it actually forces you. So if you're either putting something off or you're finding it hard to do whatever it is, it says just focus in a 20 minute block. And we can, we can all do 20 minutes without looking at social media or our emails or, or whatever it is that's distracting us. And so it's really good to get you back in the habit of focus. Um, and, and plus it gives you those breaks in that five minutes. You can look at social media or you can go and get yourself a cup of coffee or whatever. Um, and it, it times it. So it's really good sort of getting you into that timing of actually focusing. So, yeah, that's something that I, I, I draw on when I fall out of my focus habit. Oh, that is a really good one. I've, um, for some people I know, and I've played with this before, if there's external accountability, oh mm -hmm. my Lord. So yeah. I will just announce something's happening. Yes. And then, and then once I've sold a couple of them, I'm like, oh shoot. Yeah, <laughs> that gotta, thing I said I was, now. Yeah. thing I said I was going to do, I'm going to have to figure it out now. Yes. Um, yeah. So, you know, for me, when I started the podcast, I recorded the first couple of them because I thought, well, once it's recorded, now I've got guests who are going to be asking me when the hell the show's going yes, out. And yeah. I just don't want to have to tell them I'm not putting out a show. So. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> so now I've recorded a few of them. And um, then I get to the point, where, well, I've got all of this stuff and it's really good. So I need to kind of get it, you know. So sometimes yeah. for me, it's actually that external piece. But mm. I remember the last time I did job hunting, Mm. I actually quit my job. I don't recommend doing this. I quit my job before I got married because it was, I could, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. Like mm. I, I woke up one morning and I thought, I think I'm done. And mm. I sat on it for a week and I thought, because I would have these moments. It was just one of those jobs where I'd have a moment like I'm quitting. And I thought, okay, I'm not going to do this in that kind of irrational emotional mode. But if I'm still like this in a week, the resignation's going in it and I don't care what happens. And I happened to do this about three weeks before I was traveling to get married. Who does this? Who quits a job <laughs> when you're about to go away? <laughs> we were off for like a month. But what I would do is I worked out, I had about, at the time I had about 10 days before I was due to travel. And I thought, well, if I just apply to 10 jobs a day for 10 days and before mm -hmm. I travel, I'd, I'll have applied to a hundred. Yeah. I can do 10 a day because I'll, I'll just avoid the applications, mm -hmm. you know, get on LinkedIn, find 10, CV, 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 10 mm -hmm. done. And mm -hmm. so I'd write a list and it would be the first thing I would do in the day. Mm -hmm. And I would say to myself, until I've done 10, I don't get to do anything else. So yeah. I have to sit here until 10 are done. So mm -hmm. either I get my head down and find 10 real quick mm -hmm. or... <laughs> Or I'm going to spend the whole day faffing about to do 10 yeah. of these because I'm not doing anything else until it's done. And I've done it before with other things where I'd have an idea for a list of 105 tips or whatever. And I would sit down and until I'd done all of them, I'd be uncomfortable, cooped up in the bed because yeah. I'm stupid to start by working on it in the bed because the first 20 flowed. Yeah. But now I'm, now I'm uncomfortable, but I'm mm -hmm. at 45. So I've got yeah. to keep going because I can't stop until they're all written. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, you know, there's different ways of playing around with it. I mm -hmm. think some people have naturally got much more of a, an ability to sit and focus. Yeah. And other people 
it's it's more work but mm -hmm. it's worth doing and it's a really yeah. good reminder that if you're gonna if, if most of your day if you sit down with a bit of paper right and you work out your day and most of it's spent faffing about on social media mm -hmm. you, you probably don't need to be working very many hours my darling yeah you could, prob you could probably just do two good hours a day and you'd be you'd be doing a lot better <laughs> Yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah focus yeah the focus doesn't have to be for 24 hours a day yeah a few good hours of focus uh delivers and it absolutely does deliver so i recommend yeah get your head down focus use the pomodoro technique use some accountability that's how i wrote my book incidentally put it out there i'm going to write a book had no idea how to do it and end up thinking i've told everyone now gotta make it happen yeah so it's I declared it. Yeah. <laughs> So for some of you, just tell people, tell yeah. and tell somebody you know is going to harass you about it. Yeah. Not that person who forgets. You know the person who's going to be that person who's like, oh, that thing you said. You where is it? That's <laughs> normally what my clients tell me because I put it in my diary. I've got somebody to message today. <laughs> they had a week to do something. It comes up in my diary, and I'll message them like, mm -hmm. you know that thing that I gave you a week to do. Is it done yet? Yeah. Yeah. I did tell you I was going to come back to you, and I don't play. So find that person who's going to harass you. <laughs> I could take pleasure in kind of going, oh, it's D-Day. <laughs> by way of reminder, today's the day you said you were going to do this. I'm going to come back to you by 12 o'clock. The number of times people have got stuff done just because they know they yeah. set a timeline and I'm going to come back to them. Sometimes I forgot, but they, they're like on it because it's very yeah. rare I forget. Um, mm. So that's your second one is focus. So we've got consistency and focus. And what's your third one? Yeah. So what is my third one? I think it's about solving challenges, solving problems. And a lot of my work has come from that. You know, when I set up my social enterprise, it was because my daughter at the age of 13 kind of really lost herself a bit. She lost a bit of self-esteem. She was kind of dumbing herself down to fit in. And I thought I need to do something to support her. When I started researching, I saw that there were, it was like an, uh, you know, like an epidemic, to be honest. So many young girls at the age of 13, 14 were in the same boat. And I thought, oh, let me do something to help her, but I might as well help everybody mm -hmm. uh, at the same time. And, and the, this thing about being a female breadwinner and gender equality is very much about that as well. You know, I, uh, I've, I've been the female breadwinner. I have experienced inequality in the workplace and I, I, I see a problem and I think I'm not going to help myself. I might as well do as, much, do as much as I can to help so many other people experiencing the challenge too. So for me, find the problems and the problems might be that you're experiencing. It's not always, it might be just something bigger than yourself that you want to do something about. But once you find the problem and you want to solve it, then you can look for the solutions that you have or that you can bring people together to do something with. You know, it could be climate change. It could be something in another country where you've seen poverty or you've seen injustice, whatever it is, you can come together and do something about it. So find the problem and solve it. And every invention, you know, if you're a product person, that's what every invention is. It's solving a problem, isn't it? I, you know, I guess cups were invented to hold some liquid. Someone thought, how am I going to, I can't just keep doing this. Let me, let me get a cup. Let me make a cup, you know? Uh, and then there's something for every, you know, there's everything needs to be invented. Every, there's a solution for every problem. And whoever's listening right now or watching right now, think about the problems that you're experiencing. Have you solved it? If you've solved it already, maybe you need to put that solution out more widely, or maybe you can help people come up with a solution. But um, problem solving is, is exactly what we all need to be doing. Oh, such a good reminder. And you talking about climate change, um, my guest Rose May, that's exactly where her and her business partners started their business from. And they mm -hmm. now run the largest, like in three years, it's literally the largest positive impact conference in the world. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, Re like good ridiculous so mm -hmm. the world is your oyster as my mama used to say mm -hmm. my mom had so many sayings mm -hmm. i since had she still got them she's still here mum is yeah. still here with us <laughs> <laughs> this scared me for a minute then because i've met your mum i was like oh my gosh <laughs> she is still here with us going yeah. strong um but the world is your oyster and i think it doesn't need to be over complicated and yeah. there's loads of example in this examples in this series um of the podcast where i'm talking to so many people with so many different perspectives and ways in which they've solved problems whether it was events or coaching or programs or bringing people together or online or offline i mean there's so many different ways of 
solving a problem in a way that would be true to you, which has also mm-hmm. been a theme. <laughs> um, Jenny, you have been incredible. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Thanks Much for inviting fun. me. Incredible. People listening today who have been touched by something that you said, or they're thinking, how the heck do I get the book? I will put the link to the book in the show notes. So we'll make sure, let me just make a note of that. Uh, Book link in show notes. Yes, people, I am looking at the screen and writing at the same time, (laughs) multitasking. Mm -hmm. Um, So people who've been listening and they think, oh my gosh, that book, I need to get a copy of it. Or how on earth do I get in touch with Jenny? For a start, check out her TEDx. Like that's a start. Like it, it was so good. I was in the room. It was amazing balls. Um, standing ovation for Jenny. How do people get in touch with you? Yeah. So my website is jennygarrett.global. Really easy. Jennygarrett.global. Super. And you came bearing gifts as well. You're, really? you're one of those gifts. You're one of those guests. Tell yeah. us, what have you got for us? Yeah. Today? So I mentioned earlier that I created a seven day video series around resilience. Yeah. Uh, and it's got some brilliant people on it. People I highly respect talking about how to bounce back and bounce forward from change, um, how to deal with what you can control um, rather than worry about what you can't control, how to get inspiration from nature, how to think about your whole physical well-being and also the power of storytelling and the stories we tell ourselves. So it's a free video series, uh, Seven Days to a More Resilient You. And yes, I'm gifting it. <laughs> da, 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 da. Link is in the show notes, peeps. Jenny, you've been incredible. Thank you so much for joining us today. I would like to invite you to help me to wrap up today's conversation. Okay. What is the one thing you would like to leave our guests with today? Because we've talked about so much. Yes. Yeah. Well, I love uh, the saying, no one is you and that is your power. And I think that's exactly what it is. It's about trusting yourself, knowing who you are and being really confident in that person. Um, and yeah, and actually understanding the problems that you want to solve in the world. So yeah, it's about knowing what you bring. I think that's exactly how I'd sum it up. Know what you bring because nobody is you, darlings. Nobody is you. You've been listening to the Lavelda Show Women of Power podcast. It has been an absolute blast. Jenny Garrett, folks, thanks um, Thank once you. again. If you have not yet subscribed to the show, what you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on YouTube, also click on that bell. Until next time, my name's Lavelda Vincenzi. Ciao.